All right, so I'm going to make one more video here about uh, transformations, um, just to like cover a few bases that I didn't get to. And some of this is unnecessary information. You could probably skip this one. But um, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into this, there's, there's, there's a few things about this. The first thing that I want to say that's actually quite crucial about push and pop is that push and pop doesn't just save and restore transformation information. And this is um, actually not true if you're using processing, the Java-based platform that I use in some of my videos. This is only true if you're using P5.js because it's the way that they HTML5 Canvas works. Ugh. I'm using all these terms that I that I don't want to use, but I'm using them. So I'm, it actually saves and restores lots of style information as well, which can be useful to you. So for example, if I go back to this code, and at the at the uh, at the end here, if I just want to draw another ellipse, like the, another ellipse is going to be at 300, is going to be at 300, 300, 60, 60, and I hit refresh. Now look at this. This ellipse is not gray with a white stroke, with a white outline. It should be because I said stroke 255, fill 100, drew the rectangle, but actually push and pop also save and re restore stroke weight, stroke fill, all sorts of styling things. Now, if I could try to give you a list of every single function that's uh, every single setting that's saved and restored by push and pop, and I wouldn't know, I wouldn't be able to begin. But, but in addition to the transformation stuff, you can also use this for styling information, which I generally don't, but you might find this useful in another context. So that's, in, that's number one. Now the other thing that I want to mention is that you could imagine a more complex scene where, you know, this thing is rotating around this thing, and this other thing is rotating around this thing, but this other thing is rotating around this thing, but not this thing, and you start needing to say, push, draw some stuff, push, draw some stuff, push, draw some stuff, pop, draw some stuff, pop, pop, or something like that, right? So one thing you should realize is you can only have as many pops as you have push. You can only restore the amount of things you've saved. But there, the question arises, which is when I save a bunch of times and I restore, which thing that I save do I restore? And a way that you can determine the answer to this question is, is the way that I'm saving the sequence in something called a stack or a queue or perhaps some other algorithm. So there's something called a stack and there's something called a queue. I don't know if I spelled that wrong. A queue. What are these things? So push and pop are terms that apply to saving and restoring information in a stack. It's called a stack because you can think of it like a stack of paper. So if this is like a bin, your inbox, so to speak, and I put paper A in there, then paper B, then paper C, then paper D, they're stacking up A, B, C, D. So push is pushing the things onto the stack, adding to the top of the stack. When I say pop, I take the last thing out. So first one in, last one out. No, last one in, first one out. That's what it is. The stack, the last thing I put to the top of the pile of paper is the first one I'm gonna take off. This is different than a queue, which you could think of like, you know, some kind of like ticket window, <laughs> right? Where people line up in a queue. The first person in line for the queue is the first person to get a ticket. So these are data structures that are, that are uh, common to a lot of programs and a lot of scenarios that if you watch all of my videos might come up in lots of other places. You don't really need to worry about this too much in the case of transformations, but it is important to realize that push and pop are terms that relate to the data structure, a stack. They refer to pushing things onto the stack, popping things off of the stack, and if you push multiple times, save multiple times, you're restoring in reverse order. So I, I, I probably should cook up some kind of example that needs that. I can't think of one right now, so I'll come back and do that another time. But that's one thing I want to say. Now the other thing I want to say, uh, with the P5 reference here, I'm going to go to transform, and I'm going to look at all these functions. So there's a couple things that are, there's some things that are important here. Number one is, oh my goodness, in addition to rotate, there's rotate x and rotate y and rotate z. Now, those functions rotate x, y, and z. I actually have no idea what shear x and shear y do. Maybe we should look at, look at the reference to read that. Those functions are for the WebGL renderer. The WebGL renderer is a 3D renderer for P5. You know, at the recording of this video, it's still in the very early stages. There was a lot of work that was done over this past summer through a program called Google Summer of Code. So it's, the WebGL library is in much better shape and hopefully will continue to improve. It's a way of doing 3D in P5. I should come back and make another video about that and look at transformations in 3D. 
So, uh, but you know, in case you're wondering, if you're, you know, rotate is the same as rotate Z. The Z axis is the axis that comes out of the screen, and so things rotate around the Z axis. If I come back to this, right, this over here, <laughs> let me zoom in on that. I, I, I'm like desperate to do this like exact demonstration that I want to do. <laughs> Look at my hand right there. Oh, there it is. This is, that, that's the Z axis. This is pathetic. <laughs> that's the Z axis. I'm pointing at you. So that's something rotating around the z-axis. If it was rotating around the y-axis, it would come out of the screen like this. If it was rotating around the x-axis, it would come out of the screen like this, but not actually come out of the screen because it's 2D and I'm off in Never Never Land talking about 3D, but it's really 2D. It's just the illusion. Explore that on your own time or I will come back to it in a future video. But the other thing I wanted to mention here is you'll see like, oh, apply matrix, reset matrix. Why is the word matrix there? What are we talking about? Well, it turns out that the way the orientation, the transformation state, what is a transformation state? Is zero, zero in the top left? Is there any rotation? Is there any scaling? Is stored in a matrix of numbers. And that matrix of numbers might look something like this. One, zero, 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 one, zero. So this is a two by three matrix. Two rows, three columns. And this is describing the sort of default matrix with no rotation, no translation, no scaling. You could imagine if I scale by two, this matrix might turn into two, two. If I translate, some of these numbers might change. If I rotate, some of these numbers might change. So I would love to do some kind of tutorial, pretend that I know all about this and do some like tutorial series about cook, you know, programming your own transformation engine, 3D rendering thing, and like how you calculate all these matrices. But this is what's more important about it is that as you do this, it's, um, it's all stored in a matrix. So some things you can do is you can just actually call the reset matrix function. And reset is like just wipe everything. So push, 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 pop, pop, pop is like save, 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 restore, restore. But if you just want to reset back to the default state, you can just call reset matrix. Apply matrix, I've never actually used this and I don't know uh, how far along if this actually works in P5, but, but in theory, if it does, what it's supposed to do is I could cook up my own set of numbers, put that into some kind of array or something, and then apply that to the matrix. I, this video better go far away, buried deep somewhere in the playlist because this really isn't part of the first few weeks of learning to program. But I'll figure that out later. The point is, so that's really the last piece that I want to explain. What is push and pop and what is, um, why, why do we talk about a matrix when we talk about transformations? Okay, thanks.